Hey guys, it's Carrie, and I am back with another weekly chat video. If you hear uh, the little patter of some puppy feet, they are in here with me. I'm holding Coco right now. I don't know how long she's going to stay in my lap, but she was making a lot of noise earlier. So um, this is my second attempt at filming this video. I thought I just better hold her, but um, they're doing really well, and I will talk a little bit more about them at the end and show you both puppies. But um, how have you guys been doing? We have ended the first month of 2017. It is so hard to believe how fast January went by. I personally had a fabulous month for January. Um, it was really, really good. I feel so blessed and I am so thankful for that. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have all had a blessed and wonderful January as well. I hope February is even better. Um, I got uh, my list of things that I want to chat with you about, but I thought I would go ahead and start out with eBay and tell you how my eBay week has gone. I've actually had a pretty good eBay week. It started off with a bang and then kind of just slowed down. So I sold uh, six items by Tuesday and I thought that was just absolutely fabulous. <laughs> and then it kind of really slowed down and then I did sell one item on Friday night. I only had one slow payment this week. The buyer waited about, I want to say, three days to pay for an item and you know what I have started doing is um, if they don't pay for it immediately um, let, let's say they buy it like um, this person bought something on Sunday night I gave them all day Sunday night all day Monday and then I emailed them sometime on Tuesday and said I would love to ship this item to you um, but I'm still waiting on payment um, I'll do that and that person did ignore me and then it went into the um, unpaid assistant turned on automatically. Does it automatically after two days of non-payment? And that was um, going on about a day, day and a half, and then the person finally paid. They never communica communicated with me any way, shape, form, or fashion. They just made a payment. So I'm just thrilled to get paid, and that item has been shipped off. Everybody else this week has paid very quickly, which I am thrilled about that. And I did have a couple of um, things that stressed me just a little bit this week. One of them, um, the, apparently the post office delayed the delivery, and so the person emails me, and they were like, they went on for like a paragraph or two just doing all this, saying all this stuff, and um, then they finally ended up asking, what address did you mail it to? And I responded back and I say, I always print my labels straight from eBay, and it will print out the address that the buyer uses. And so I copied and pasted that address, and I said, this is the one I use. I explained what I do. And by that evening, I got an email. It was early Friday morning by late Friday night. She said the item had been delivered, so I was very happy to hear about that. Then my other item, I finally sold that coach watch that I showed in, and it may, was it last week's chat or the week before that I said somebody offered me $10 for? I did end up selling it for $35 and was glad to get it. The watch had been, I had it for several years, and it was um, uh, quite a bit scratched up. I mean, it was still in great working condition, but really, really scratched up. So um, I had the links for it. So this is where the problem arose. Everything worked out. I just want to say that right off the bat. Uh, but, um, oh, sorry about that. That was Chanel. Chanel. Shh. People don't want to hear you barking when they can't see you. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I had a set of links. I usually have um, links taken out of any watch that has a clasp on it instead of a like a watch band that buckles. And so I've got a smaller wrist, so I will have some links taken out of all my watches. And I usually save all of those links. I do have a couple of watches that I don't know where the links were, but every other watch that I have sold, I have had the links except for two watches that were really like cheap um, fossil, well, I think they were fossil watches. No, I'm sorry, guest watches. That doesn't even matter, sorry about that. Um, so I had the set of links for this coach watch. 
They absolutely look like they match to me. I didn't take them back to, say, a jeweler and have them refitted back on the watch. I didn't do that. But the, the um, link had this little bit of a, like an arrow, uh, like a bow and arrow, an arrow like that. Um, etched in the links um, of the extras. Then I looked at the coach watch. The links on that one also had that error, arrow, excuse me, etched into it. So it looked like it absolutely was the same link as well. Also, that coach watch was a boyfriend style watch in stainless steel. Um, it was silver color. It was the only watch I've ever had in that style. And anyway, so I shipped the links off, and in my description I said I will be sending the links, extra links, with the watch. Well, I get this email, and the person is very upset, and she says the um, links don't fit the watch. And I'm like, oh my goodness, did I make a mistake? I mean, it is possible I'm human. Maybe those links belong to another watch. I don't believe they did, but maybe it's possible I've owned a lot of watches in my lifetime. Maybe that happened. And I said, I am so very sorry if those don't fit. I sent those in good faith, absolutely believing that those links belong to that watch. I said, um, I will be more than happy to do a refund in this case. Normally, I will not do a refund, but if I messed up, I will refund the item. And I said, please, I won't um, just ship everything back to me and we'll do a refund that way and I'll refund your full amount. Well, the person came back and said, no, I want to stick to the original contract or agreement. I went, well, you know, I can't help that <laughs> if they don't match. And she said, I want to order new links from Coach and I want you to reimburse me the amount of those links. Well, I mentioned this to a friend of mine and she started Googling those links. They were $22 a piece and there were three links that had been removed. And I'm like, that's $66. I, no way am I going to pay her $66 when she only paid me $35 for the watch. So um, I went back and I said, I mean, we kind of went back and forth for a while. So I finally said, um, let me know what the price is. I can't agree until I know what the price of those links are. And I said, I would still rather refund you the money and you send it back to me. And I did say, I want to take it to a jeweler and have them look at it. She was adamant about me paying for the links. Well, Later that day, I got another email for, from her and she's like, I am so sorry. I couldn't figure out the closure on the watch. And um, she said, it fits perfectly. She said, I finally figured it out it fits perfectly and I don't even need those links. And she ended up giving me a great feedback. So everything worked out for the best. So all I can assume that she did, the, when I shipped the watch, it, the clasp was closed. I'm guessing she tried to squeeze it over her um, hand that way and she couldn't get it over. And so she thought that she needed those extra links so the watch would be bigger. Um, therefore, when she finally figured out how to open it, it um, she was able to get it over her hand. So that was just a mistake on her part. I understand that sometimes watches can be confusing, clasp can be confusing. I remember years ago I had a watch I couldn't, it took me two days to figure out how to open it. It was that ridiculous. So. It, no hard feelings whatsoever. Everything worked out. I'm very thrilled about that. And I rambled on a long time about my eBay stories this week. I do want to bring up one other thing by eBay, and I've got this in my notes. Um, and just let me know your opinion. This is something that I have not done intentionally. I have done it, I guess you could say, unintentionally, where I bought something that I was going to use personally and then did not end up using. And what I'm talking about is buying retail and selling it on eBay. What I ended up doing in my case was I had bought a pair of Michael Kors um, shoes. I didn't wear them and I sold them um, like new in the box and I actually made more money um, from the eBay, eBay sale than what I had actually paid for them. And that's happened a few times with me, not many times, but so um, the, the eBay uh, or the YouTube channel that I was watching was See and Save. I believe she does um, eBay full-time as well as some other resale sites and um, she's very, very, very knowledgeable about eBay and I definitely recommend her channel if you want to learn about doing different things on eBay. 
So she had went to the Dollar Tree store and bought some stuff, I guess for a dollar, and she was going to sell this on eBay, but mark the price up. And she was very, very, very much against telling anybody um, on YouTube what she was, what she had bought and what she was going to sell it for because she says it, it's basically going to get the word out and other people will start um, doing the same thing and it's going to flood the market with whatever the item may be and basically nobody's going to make money. So she's like, please, if you do this, do not tell people what you are buying retail and selling it on eBay. Now, once she has sold stuff and, um, and basically cleaned out her, um, her stockpile or whatever you want to call it, um, she will tell you what she was doing because she did that um, with one item. She had, and this was previous that she had bought, she had a Hello Kitty mermaid beanie baby. It was a, a T.Y. Thai beanie baby. And she had got it for uh, several of these for a dollar at the Dollar Tree store. Well, what she did, she says, I held on to these for quite a while, waited till they, uh, the market was no longer flooded with them, and then she listed them on, on eBay. And I want to say she sold one for like $9.99, $10, something like that. So, um, she did, that's how she does it. What are your opinions about that, like not disclosing? Like I share a lot of stuff that I sell with you guys, but I am not doing that for, I'm not doing eBay for a living. It's just a hobby for me to make a little bit of extra income. Um, and I don't mind sharing things with people. And I, my thinking is eBay is huge. Uh, there's hundreds of thousands, thousands of listings, thousands of people, if not millions of people that use it. I think um, potentially it's a big enough market to um, allow people to do that, but she was very much against it. I just don't know how I feel about it. I've just never done it. And so I don't know what that's like, but it's basically just buying stuff in bulk retail, reselling it on eBay for a higher price than you bought it for. I have no issue with doing that whatsoever as a seller. As a buyer, I personally do not like it <laughs> and will not buy. Usually, I've done it one time, and that was with the Disney Princess Mirrors. I ended up buying them on eBay, um, most of the collection, higher than what they were selling at Sephora. Then Sephora relaunched them, and I, sh oh, I was mad at myself for ever buying them on eBay like that. So um, doing that, I'm very much against doing that. Only as a, as a buyer, I'm very much against it. I'm just keeping it real with you guys. But as a seller, I have no issue with it. So I feel like I'm very much um, showing a paradox about that and just being a little strange with it. But that's just how I feel. So I am going to move on past eBay right now. Let me glance at my notes. Um, oh, I got something to show you. Um, there is, uh, I saw this place on Facebook, and it's Whoops, um, Unmistakably Delicious. And these are French macaroons. I saw, um, somebody said, oh, this uh, store just opened at the Mall at Green Hills, which is my favorite mall in Nashville. So it opened up Friday, like a week ago Friday. And I went out on Saturday and I bought a box of them. They are pricey and probably, I didn't even look up the calories. I have no idea how much those are, but very pricey. And so I bought a box of them and they are fabulous. The Literally the best macaroons I've ever had in my life. And um, I have had a few in the past that were okay, but they were very dry. Didn't have a lot of flavor. These things are super flavorful. And so um, I got a box. Then I ate them within three days, 12 of them within three days. I know that's horrible. And then I kept craving them and craving them. So I went back to the mall at Opry Mills. I found out that they also have a kiosk out there that sells these, and I bought some more. And just to show you quickly, let me open the box. What they look like. I hope I don't have it upside down. I don't think I do. But um, since, well, the box does not want to open. Since I'm holding the puppies, I usually prefer to wash my hands um, <laughs> after I touch the puppies before I eat anything. That's just me, so I don't want to touch it. But that's what they look like. They are, I asked, just because I'm nosy, I said, where are they uh, being baked at? 
and made. And I said, I was thinking somewhere in Nashville. And she says, oh, they're made in Manhattan and they're flown into Nashville twice a week and delivered to all the different locations. There's either three or four places in Nashville or around Nashville that sell them. And so, um, and she said, I don't know what we do with them when um, we move the old ones out because after a while they do get a little bit stale. But for, they, they're good for several days and they're fabulous. And so um, they are expensive. This box of 12 was, I want to say, $25. Or you can get a box of six for $15. And I want to say they're maybe $2.50 each outrageously expensive and probably loaded in cal loaded up in calories but they were so good I think they were worth it after I bought two boxes of them I realized that I just spent fifty dollars in one week and then I was like girl what did you do so I will not be buying any more for a while after this um, they're a treat but I will not be buying any more after a while it's something that uh, when you hear or think about it I just spent fifty dollars it's like and I'm trying to be good and save money. So I did bad, I messed up, but I just wanted to point that out that they're very tasty. And if you have one of those locations, go buy and get a sample because they do give free samples. And that's what happened. And that's why I ended up buying uh, a bunch of them <laughs> because they were so tasty. Um, oh, and one other thing, I did ask the lady, I said, is it pronounced macaroons or macarons? I've heard it pronounced both ways because it is spelled macarons and she said it is absolutely pronounced macaroon, not macaron, but she says people will almost fight over how do you say it, but she said, you know, just pretty much whatever you want to say, but it's officially macaroon is what she told me. So there you go if you wanted to know that. Um, I want to move into... Um, some things that I saw on YouTube actually was last week, but didn't get to this part. One of them was, I don't know if any of you watch, Dr I need to stop Chanel. She is getting into something. Sorry about that. Chanel was doing something she wasn't supposed to be doing. But anyway, do any of you watch Jerusha Couture TV? I believe that is what she calls her YouTube channel. She is in the luxury um, goods uh pretty much area on YouTube that is what she mainly does is luxury items that she hauls uh, buys and hauls and then shows on YouTube so um, she does uh, basically buys from retail and she also buys pre-loved she has been getting so much hate from people from buying pre-loved items and it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever and I don't think it really makes any sense to her either why does anyone care if you buy, say, a Chanel handbag, whether you get it at a Chanel boutique or whether you get it, say, from Fashion File or eBay, be careful if you get it from eBay because it may be fake. Um, I would say if you're going to buy it retail, uh, excuse me, resale, get it from a either a consignment store that has a good authenticator, get it from Fashion File that authenticates everything, and then they have a policy in place that if it's uh, if you find out that the item is uh, fake or not the real thing, they will give you your money back. So places like that I feel comfortable with. If you do have a trusted eBay seller, um, I would still get it authenticated anyway, and then you can file a claim if it's fake. But and I'm like, who cares? I have bought some stuff, um, handbags pre-loved. I got my Celine handbag pre-loved and my um, Givenchy Antigona pre-loved. They were both listed as new um, without tags and one was new with tags. But regardless, it was resale and I got a great deal and a lot of money off. So it is a fabulous way to be able to get something that you've been wanting that may be on your wish list for a long time and it may be actually the only way you can actually get something because um, stores, um, certain stores don't ship on online. Um, for example, Chanel doesn't ship online. You have to be in there and pick it up in person regardless of what boutique you've um, put it, your name on the wait list. So for example, I was talking to one of the ladies at um, Nordstrom she works in the shoe department and she was telling me, actually, she said, um, she said, oh, just go, I said, I was telling her about something that I wanted and she said, hey, just go put your name on the wish list. You're not obligated to buy it, but it, it allows your name to come up if the item comes in and they will call you. But she did say that 
you have to be there in person to actually pay for it and they may take it your card over the phone but um, to pick it up and she said some people literally will do this in different cities around the country and they have to get a plane ticket obviously you know so there's people from Nashville that are flying to New York to pick up their Chanel handbag and that's literally an extra several hundred dollars um, to add on and a lot of people they're like they may be just saving to the best that they can save and they may be saving for several years for a Chanel handbag and people think that's crazy regardless of how you feel about it I admire people that are willing to save and to get items on their wish list it just may not be something that you want but I admire when people save it um, save their money to do that but they may not be able to actually get to a boutique that has them. I am lucky enough, I would say, that there is a Chanel boutique in the Nordstrom store, and I can go in there and look at them, and if I choose to do so, I can put my name on the waiting list, or if there's something in the store, I can go ahead and purchase it. So, with all that being said, um, you know, whether you get it pre-loved or on resale, it's like, who cares? So anyway, Jerusha has been getting hate over this and I just feel bad about that. Number one, I just I very much dislike the trolls on the internet, but they are out there. There's like nothing really we can do about them except block them and move on and a lot of times they will um, get a brand new account and do it again and you just have to keep blocking. That's just something that you have to do if you choose to put stuff out on social media which whatever platform you choose to do so that is stuff that you may go through unfortunately it happens I hate it but it does happen um, okay I mentioned last week I think I did that someone got very offended at um, a review that I had done I don't know if I went into detail but I had done uh, back at really at the beginning of this channel or very close to the beginning I did a review of a moisturizer I will be honest and tell you I have no idea what I said, um, but apparently I gave it a negative review. I didn't go back and watch the video. But um, apparently this lady, it was her absolutely favorite moisturizer. And she got very offended that I gave it a negative review. She wasn't, she didn't, it wasn't like a troll comment where she was just leaving me a lot of hate. But she kept referring to me as, I think she said, this woman's review. And she wasn't speaking to me in her comment. She was speaking to anybody else that would read the comment and about how great of a product um, that it was that um, this woman is wrong, I disagree with her. Um, number one, um, whenever somebody does a review of a product, they can only do a review of how the item works for them. It does not mean they are wrong whatsoever. It is their opinion about how something worked for them. It is cor a correct opinion and review of what it, what happened to that person. So whenever somebody does a review, whether it be me or anybody else, and you disagree with their review, it's no big deal. Don't get mad at the person because they didn't like an item that you liked. It is just a difference of opinion. If somebody gives a negative review to a product that I like, it's like, who cares? I still like it. I'm still going to buy it. You know, it's like no big deal. But I gave my opinion on that product I didn't apparently I didn't like it um, and I never purchased it again and that is for for me to do that it may help some of you out some of you may still want to go out and try that product and that is your prerogative you go for it if you want to try that product I'm just doing this to make a video to tell people my uh, my situation and usually I will tell you like if it's a skin product like a moisturizer I have dry skin I let people know that and I said this didn't help me at all or this broke me out or this did that whatever and I, and I may say if you have this skin it may work for you um, but regardless that did happen to me so that is pretty much it for the ch this chat it has been a long one and I'm gonna quickly show you the puppies Coco has fallen asleep in my lap I'm gonna see if I can get Chanel over here without um, actually stopping the camera but we'll see so I just woke um, Coco up by picking her up here she is and she is so sleepy right now but she is my hyper baby um, she's still um, quite a bit smaller than her sister but she is so hyper 
and she was bullying her sister a little bit this morning. She was grabbing a hold of Chanel's ears and pulling on them, and I had to get her to stop doing that. They fight a lot, and I don't mind. They're just playing that they're doing that, but um, I don't like when they pull on each other's ears because that hurts the other one so bad, but they usually don't listen to me. But other than that, she is doing very well, and I am so thrilled that I got the puppies. Um, Chanel, come here. Come here, baby. Come here. Good girl. Come on. Come here. Oops. I just kicked the camera. Come here, baby. Come here. Come see mama. Yay, I got her to come to me, but I moved the camera, so I hope we're all still in focus. <laughs> Here she is, and she's doing really well. She's my calm girl, but she will try to lick you to death. See what she's doing right there? It's like, she wants to lick all the time, but um, I would prefer not to be licked in the face a lot, but she loves it. That's her favorite thing, and here she is. That's how big she is. And there she is. Hey, sweetie. Yeah, you're a pretty girl. Both of you are pretty girls. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. Bye-bye, guys.